Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to Skegness Town. This is the roundup video for season four, which found Skegness Town in the seventh tier of English football. The first tier that we weren't actually predicted to go straight up as champions at the very least. That being said, I do need to basically immediately spoil how this season went because the game you're about to see, the game that I recorded, well, I recorded a few games because I wasn't sure which one was going to be the last one. That might have given it away in and of itself. Yes, the game that you're about to see is the it's the playoff final. The playoffs in Tier 7 is a complicated system which involves playing teams from all of the Tier 7 leagues. It's very similar to the sort of Spanish promotions in their lower leagues as well. We end up playing anyone possibly from that, from that tier. I think we avoided a round and then we won the first two rounds that we were part of. We won the semi-final of the playoffs on penalties. Yep, so nerves are already high going into this match. I'd gone through one stressful set of extra time and penalties. I did not need any extra drama. So did we get any extra drama in the final itself? Well, it's over to pass me to live the answer to that question once more. Oh, Skegness Town versus Hyde United. Player final. Both teams might get through here. I'll be honest, this song's called Goals, so I put it on. Right then, player final. The reason I didn't get automatically promoted is because I lost a match 3-2 where the opponent scored three goals from three shots on target. So... Yeah, I know how you feel. Two points separated me from automatic promotion, and I lost a match to the team that won the league, 3-2, because they had three shots on target and three goals. XG of 2.5 to us, 0.4 for them. That's the reason why I'm not automatically promoted and having to do this. But it's nil-nil. They've had the better of this game. I don't like this. Okay, we're getting back into it. We're getting back into it. Not a lot happening. They've got a throw-in. I don't know why we're playing in our home kit, by the way. It's slightly kick-clashy. Green Birch. Come on, play him in, play him in. Find the sensible ball. Play him in. Play it backwards. Square it. Or don't. Short option isn't being covered here. Eddie Brown pops that in. Why is Eddie Brown on the short? Scales next to that. How is that free kick? He clearly got the ball. And then just fell over. Late encourage in the second half. And Barnett's had a shocker. I'm not happy with the performance. You weren't that bad. You weren't that bad. You weren't that bad. Let's get out there. Joe, Joe Bradshaw's still furious, as he always is. I'll be honest, you've been on a 6.3. If you get... Any worse, you're coming off here. I'm, wait I'm waiting for him, really, to tick into the next level. I mean, there we are, those got worse. I'm waiting, for I'm waiting for his conditioning to get lower. I'm trying to justify taking him off. Scales is on a 6.4 as well. Okay, K Yari's in. Blazed it, he's blazed it. Come on, Jordan Barnett. Get tired. Get tired, Jordan Barnett. Louis White's got tired first. Scales has had an absolute shocker out there. Yeah, that's probably right. Be blind, defend. No, don't swap them over. Move them into the middle. There we are. All right, we've gone dramatic there, I feel like. I think it also kind of protects Barney, who's had a shocker. I have to bring Gary Bruce on. I can't, I can't have that performance. Demand more late in this half. It's still nil-nil. What a thriller. Don't give me a highlight now. Extra time again. I turned him around. All right, we're knackered. We can't just keep, we can't keep going all out here. Everyone's getting booked as well. I got, yeah, I have. Take that off. We're going to get a red card before the end of this goes, I think. New heads it forward to. No one in particular. They're getting more subs. But the only consolation is probably there is knackered as we are. And possibly all four of us get promoted anyway. What is that ball? That's a sensational assist if that had gone to him. I don't know if I need to win this. Because three teams get relegated. So I don't know how this settles itself out. Cowling. Bruce. Gillespie. He's... <sighs> He's offside. He was offside. Because three teams get relegated. I don't know if they're going to promote four anyway, just to equalise it out. Because one of the divisions got 21. I don't know if they're going to try and settle the both divisions with 22 teams next year. So there might be two getting promoted into both. What is that? What was that ball? That was such a weird ball. Oh, McGray, I'm on a booking there. That was a great little challenge. Heather kicks it back. I don't know what to do here. Encourage? A bit late in the game to be encouraging, but... That's a penalty. That's a penalty, is it? He's got the ball cleanly. That's a penalty. Green steps up. Cocks it up. Justice. Instant justice. That was the clearest penalty. That was the clearest tackle I've seen in a while. Hang on. It's gone on the score sheet there. Oh, there we are. Wait, why is he... Did I need to do it like this? That's five. Demand more. There's a highlight. I don't like this. We're five seconds from the end of injury time. They're in our box. New heads it clear. Chris Adulu is in that spot where I just told him to go. Gillespie's in space. Green Birch. Brown. Got back. It's gone back. It's gone back. Bruce is there. Bruce is there. Inward to the other Bruce. Plays it back to New. This is injury time. Oh, Chris Adulu's not going to get on the end of that, I don't think. I'm panicking. Other Bruce. Chris Adulu. Bruce, Ryan, if Brown's on side, if Brown's on side! Viewers, um... What is likely the final kick of the game? 
The goalkeeper is at an absolute mare. He's charged out. Eddie Brown puts it round the goalkeeper. Our star player comes alive in the final. He's booked as well on a 6.6. He's come alive at the final moment of the game. I'm shaking. I'm genuinely shaking. Just saving that. They played horribly, but you've been promoted no matter what here. If they get promoted as well, I'm going to laugh. But <laughs> Tampa threw in our division got promoted as well. They were third. Both teams that got promoted from our section were, were from our division. Oh, thank you. Six grand and 3.6k. Hang on, does that help? Is that less money than we were on before? They've given us a wage budget. That might have been less money than we had in the bank at the point of finishing the season. Six saves. The goalkeeper was the best one as well. The goalkeeper got man of the match. I love that. 10k. That doesn't really put a dent in things. Two journalists have turned up. The non-league paper. Neil's back. Neil's back. Oh, we've missed him. He's not been here all season for some reason. Oh, it's so good to see Neil. I'm an ambitious manager. Nigel Allen was sensational. Big Nige. Just criticise the goal. Just criticise the ref and all that because of that nonsense penalty. I'm an ambitious manager. Thank you. Looking back at it, it looks a little bit ridiculous, doesn't it? Of course, you've got to remember that their XG is inflated by that penalty miss. So all in all, it was a deserved victory. It was a yellow card heavy victory as well. That doesn't matter. The promotion is there. So it's Banarama North or South football for Skegness in the next season. I'll spoil the answer. We're back in the North. I'm so relieved. By the way, if you want to see how the conclusion to the Valorama North campaign goes on, this video will go live around about the same time I'm going to be going live with that particular stream. Uh, once again, I appear to be uploading this on the closing day or the closing set of games for that particular season. I don't know how this keeps happening. I'll try and actually get a recap video up nearer the start of the next season <laughs> rather than continually uploading them on the last streams of the following season. I will say this, playoffs might be happening again. Yeah, enjoy the stress. I won't. But back to this set of playoffs, and you can see we actually changed a formation. We no longer employed defensive wingers. We we deployed, weirdly enough, with what um what I've seen a few other people do. It was completely unintentional, but I've seen other people use this formation in non-league. It's kind of bizarre that this seems to work down here. We've all done it independently. I don't think anyone's seen each other do it <laughs> as such, but 4-3-1-2 was the system, mostly just to get the best out of the players I had available to me. The wingers were rubbish, and Gillespie came into form when I, well, I say Gillespie came into form, I started playing him in January, and he was really good. So having Brown, Gillespie, and what was usually Morris behind them, Morris hates big games, which is why he didn't start this one, that was the system that we deployed. It was essentially our three best players, making sure we had all of them on the pitch from the start. But there's a the table as a whole, as you can see it there. We were actually only two points away from automatic promotion, and yeah, some of those results in the run-in look a little bit awkward now, because if we'd won any of those rather than drawing any of them, we would have been top because goal difference was in our favour. Funnily enough, both playoff promotion spots went to our division, which makes me feel so much better about getting out of this division, because clearly it's the best one. Out of all the Tier 7 ones, it's clearly the hardest one, which makes me even more annoyed that I wasn't in the Northern versions. If I go on the season preview, look, we were fifth. We were fifth. We weren't even in top two or three. Welling... Welling, who were top, were second favourites. Tamworth, who were the other promoted side, were first. So the top two predicted went up, and so did we. I mean, in fairness, it's a good it's a good odds for a newly promoted side to this division, but still, seeing this guy's name here is super irritating. All the year he kept I kept trying to sign him because he's valued at zero pounds, so I could assign him at any point, continuing rejecting me because we weren't we weren't an important enough club for him to join, despite the fact that we were continually ahead of rugby in the league. I tried to sign him once we got promoted. Still didn't want to come. But you can see average rating top of that, joint top of the average ratings, Eddie Brown and Gillespie. You can see why that was a partnership that I forged in the second half of that season. Eddie Brown, 38 goals. He's still doing the business. Morris, I think we found Morris's level. So once again, I've put a deliberate save in at the end of that game, so the next day should trigger the end of season stuff. The FA Cup, by the way, was between Southampton and Bristol. Now, obviously, this is an alternate timeline. I think Southampton might have won it anyway. But that's weird. So here we are at the end of season review, 2023 season. Of course, now we're getting to a stage where the inbound players are getting lesser and lesser. We're trying to keep a more consistent 11. It's an improving 11. There's less of a rotating door now we're in tier seven. See, Gillespie, we brought in on loan. I didn't start start I didn't start starting him until January when I felt like Morris was out of his depth now a little bit. And boy, did that decision pay off. 26 goals and 29 starts in the end, eight assists. Lee New was a great centre-back on loan from Northampton, 37 appearances above a 7 rating. Nigel Allen came in from Lanelli Town in Wales, 
very solid. 52 games played for us. I'm still playing him in the Vanarama North. So that shows you how consistently decent he is. 20 years old, he's called Nigel. I don't know what his parents were thinking calling him Nigel in this day and age, but Nigel Allen, one of my favourite goalkeepers I've used. Gary Cowling came in, played a few. He was all right. Magri's, Magri was a new centre-back, the Maltese player. He had to go on international duty a few times. 45 starts, very consistent. Kean Scales, again, very consistent on loan from Bradford. And then the rest are just sort of bits and pieces players. Green Birch came in late, a releasee from Doncaster. Green Birch came in late, he played a few games. 6.83, solid performances from him, all told he came in very late. He was essentially brought in quite late to be a perhaps replacement for Morris, who doesn't like big games, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Morris actually performed a lot better once I moved him to that shadow striker role. Bradshaw, 16 starts as well, a rotation centre-back, he was quite useful. Brian Bruce played 40 games, he was incredibly average all year. We're going back again. Gary Bruce, Gary Bruce is an interesting one. I'll highlight him now, this might be a mistake. But Gary Bruce was an interesting one. He came, back in, he came in as a right-back with preferred left only feet foot i spent the first half of the season putting him a left back i don't know what cretins thought he was a right back but never mind at this level of football developing an inverted wing back who does that mind you knowing forest did it in fairness but free agent gary bruce yeah we had two bruces it was confusing if i actually fix this issue i could, it does actually go back to the page you want it to be on and then last but not least there's a few players here played bit parts the confusing one marvin evans you're thinking why did i bring him in he's two stars um he played 13 times for us he agreed to a very low wage. That was why. Penny Bont in the Cymru South. 45 appearances, 3 goals, 44 assists. I now realise I probably should have looked at their strikers and not him. Because those assists had to go to someone. And that someone might be the reason that there's 44 assists. We had 9 assists in 14 starts the following year. So I was thinking, he's still on a pretty similar track here. Came to us, did absolutely sod all. 2 assists in 13. So now I am thinking perhaps it was the other person that was the important part in that relationship. Again, looking at that table, there's a late loss to Rugby Town in that, which was irritating, and a 1-1 with East Grinstead. East Grinstead probably my favourite team in this division because of their decision to make their logo everyone's favourite animal, the Wasp. Way to endear yourself to fans, I suppose, but whatever. They were bottom. So that, let, last, that draw against the team that ended up bottom essentially cost us the automatic promotion. So that was fun. We're up to 145 people on average turning up, should say. Uh, we're now playing in Boston Stadium because ours isn't big enough for the Vanarama North. FA Cup went all right. We got knocked out by Habish Swifts, which was unfortunate. FA Trophy, Gosport Borough, who were in our division, dealt with us there. And the English Southern League Cup, a competition which I gave zero care about. And we were knocked out by Banbury United, who have one of the best logos in football. Moments to remember, there's plenty of those. 6-1 against High, 6-2 against Gosport in the league. We did get the revenge in the league on them. And goal of the season was Morris. Actually, Morris scoring a goal from 24 yards. I feel like we had better ones than that, perhaps. Financially, everything was down, confusingly. Or the sponsorship, the same. Corporate, down, bizarrely. That might be due to less big games, because obviously we had the cup run the previous season. Same with the match day commercial. All of those probably affected by the lack of the good FA Cup run this year. And the season 11, as you can see, Gillespie, Brown and Morris lead that line. You can see Morris there had 18 assists and 28 goals, 43 starts. You can see goal contribution wise, matching the matching the appearances. Not quite the actual raw goal output that he's had in previous years. Eddie Brown maintained his though, 47 goals, 51 starts in total. Also with 18 assists on top of that. And Gillespie pretty much ran about half the goals, half the assists and half the appearances. So had we played Gillespie all year, we could have had an absolutely sensational thing. But hindsight's a wonderful thing. Josh Kelly, only 16 starts is the best right, right back we had. Right back was an issue. Right back was an issue. Every other position largely consistent. Keen Scales played a reasonable amount in midfield. That was probably the next least consistent position there. Player of the season, Eddie Brown. Young player, still Eddie Brown at 23. Nigel is the signing of the season. I agree with that one. Top goal scorer, most assists. Technically, most assists is also Eddie Brown. But he got 14 player of the matches, highest average rating, and most passes completed was, in fact, Ryan Bruce. And a lot of a lot of record breaking. I feel a bit weird that Morris gets the assist record when Eddie Brown had the same. I wonder if it's due to slightly less appearances. Although Morris now gains the highest appearances total, and Eddie Brown gets the highest goals total. Well, with fastest goals, 13 seconds. Most league goals in a season as well for Eddie Brown. That's a record. I thought he'd actually scored less, but perhaps he just did more in the league and less in cups. We did have more games last year, of course with the cup runs and again history in the making promotion all we like record high of course record low haul of league goals for Skegness out of 102 
record low of 102. Seriously, if you're doing not, if you're doing a non-league save, get Brown and Morris. If you're in these lower tiers, get Brown and or Morris because they're going to score goals for you. Eddie Brown might be a bit difficult depending on what tier you're in. I got him in tier 10, but he also got him three games from the end of the season. So we, clearly he was very desperate. Boy, am I glad he was. Record high points total to reach the playoffs. So that just rubs in the fact we probably should have won the title. Syrian Sester win their division with the fewest points. 78 won their division. 88 was second in mine. 80 was third. And overall best 11. Will Thornton joins him. We've not really talked about him yet. Gillespie is joined. Gillespie in only 29 starts joins the bench. Bizarrely. Nigel Allen goes straight in as the starting goalkeeper. Magri joins that bench in central defence. Yeah, I kind of agree with those additions for the most part. A little bit surprised to see Gillespie in already, perhaps. But the expectations for next season, of course, just naturally survive. Although it's not attempt to avoid re relegation, it's just avoid. Financial damage, yeah, that's a problem. But that's, now we actually have a wage, basically. Now that we actually just have a wage, we did lose a fair bit of money. A lack of a decent cup run, and the fact that we've got a lot of wages and not really any more fans. I say a lot of wages. Two grand a week. But two grand a week adds up. That's basically all it is. The fact we're paying people to play now. We have people on squad contracts. I had I had to tie down Eddie Brown. Magri, perhaps more money than he was worth. Bradshaw, definitely more money than he's worth. And of course, that two grand does factor in pay-by-play uh, players as well. It does a calculation and works it out. So, it, strictly speaking, wasn't necessarily two grand a week, depending on the players who played. Still got players like Chris Dulu, who are £100 per appearances and 45 per assist. He didn't play a lot, though. In the end, partially because of that reason, partially because he wasn't that good. It wasn't horrible, though, either. At this stage, I can't fully remember why I changed the formation. Looking at the performances, Chris Adulu didn't have a bad round of things, and Gary Cowling, who did play on the left in the winger formation, also not terrible. 6.93, so I'm not sure why I did that. I moved Gary. Gary could play uh, centre midfield, so that wasn't too much of an issue. Clearly, though, I think we just went on a bit of a bad run. I decided to change things up, and the new formation worked, so I stuck with it. But if I sort by appearance and just try to find anyone who... I've overlooked it. Will Thornton actually only played 12 games. Why has he been in introduced to the best 11? Played uh, played a fair bit last year, actually. He was one of the better players last year and continued with reasonable performance this year as well. So I guess we just don't have that many consistent centre-backs yet in that best 11. But I will highlight Magri a little bit. You can see that he is quite good. He's not particularly pacey, but he's just a very solid central defender. And on, t and on 250 quid a week, I'm damn glad he was good. The penultimate note in this particular video comes with yeah, you can see he's the only one with star ratings. The traitor that is Mattia Biaggi. You may remember, of course, last year I had very continental flair on the wings and we had Chris on one side and Biaggi on the left. He was the first person to leave this club to a team of a similar level. Everyone else had gone to a much higher division in terms of people who had left us. Obviously, the two quality youngsters, clearly, that we had went to league teams, the Newport County and the Rotherham players. We had a defender when we were in Tier 8 go to a Tier 6 side, which was a bit of a surprise at the time because nobody had actually left to anyone who wasn't a league team at that point. Fun fact, we've actually got that player back now. We're in tier six. But you'll see him if you join the streams. Twitch.tv slash Amazing T. You'll see me over there. But yeah, he left us and he won the title. Fickle. Yeah, definitely was. Couldn't really begrudge him because he was on a decent wager there though. It was annoying and I'm re really, really annoyed he left. But consistent season from him. We won't see him in tier six though because they got into the southern side of things. Now we return to the northern side. But back in tier six, now we join Grantham and Boston as fellow Lincolnshire sides. So we actually have local rivalries in tier six. So I'll let you know how those panned out in the next video, the next catch up video. If you want to see, as I said, if you want to see these kind of games live, hop on over to Twitch where I should be live roughly around the same time this video. So it was a very dramatic end to that particular season. We could have won the title on the final days in the final weeks if we had not slipped up against a couple of teams in that run-in, we'd had a more consistent run-in, we'd have won that title and not had to deal with the drama playoffs. And what a drama playoffs that ended up being as well. Boy, oh boy. Took me a while to recover from that one. But your Season 5 recap video should be up relatively sooner, in theory. I've said this before, it's not particularly panned out. But hopefully the Season 5 recap video will be up a little bit sooner after the season concludes later today, basically. So until next time, thank you for watching. Trail.